Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Yvette Cooper came third in the contest to become Labour leader. Her campaign only really came to life back in early September when she became the first front-ranked UK politician to call for Britain to take in 10,000 refugees from the Syrian war. Now in her new role as chair of Labour's Refugees Task Force, she's been on a fact-finding visit to the Jungle Refugee Camp, as it's called, in Calais. Giles Dillnett went along with her. Welcome to the Jungle. Calais' ad hoc refugee camp. 6,000 people are currently living in what, in most generous terms, is a rubbish tip. Oh, I've heard about it. There it is. The church. Yeah. Yvette Cooper, a former Shadow Home Secretary and Labour leadership contender, argued over the summer Britain should take more Syrian asylum seekers than the government had proposed. Now a backbencher, she's returned as a guest of Citizens UK, not to argue we should fling open the doors, but that the jungle is a problem nobody's trying to find a solution to. Why do we not have UNHCR here doing proper assessments of everybody? Are they asylum seeker? Are they not an asylum seeker? You know, have they, have they got a safe home to go to? And therefore, actually, they need to go back through the immigration system? Have they got refugee status? You know, nobody's doing that assessment. You've got to have a proper process to assess people's refugee status. And the moment that's not happening, so that's, I think, is that's the real big tragedy of here, is that people have just got stuck here in these awful conditions and there is no assessment taking place. Some would call it hell. That's a little hyperbolic, but only a little. But more, it's inaccurate. It's really purgatory, since there's a real sense nobody is going anywhere, unless to climb on board a lorry and illegally smuggle themselves to the UK. And a camp unsuited to summer is preparing for a winter it is woefully inadequate to cope with. There's an argument which says if you help refugees, then somehow that will create a crisis. No, the crisis is here, the crisis is now. The crisis is happening. The question is what we do to stop the crisis getting worse and worse. So you can't have people stuck living among you know, these, the, the rubbish and the, the pools of water and the mud while they're applying for asylum. You've got to have a basic humanitarian aid in place. Hi, I'm Claudine. Yvette, good to meet you. Yes, how are you? At the Médecins Sans Frontières clinic on site, the issue of the conditions and winter is a problem itself. The problem when we see the camp, it's very cold. Yeah. The hygiene is not very nice. And what happened, the, the condition uh, give the, um, to improve this infection respiratory, the mm -hmm. simple flu, Pass some time in the right. bronchiolite and uh, that's it. Yeah. Yes. So like it's just bronchitis. Yes. 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 There are many women and children. Yes, they are outnumbered, but they're housed in two sections of the camp we're not allowed to film in. Though clearly some choose to live in other parts of the camp and walk the roads around. And it's the issue of unaccompanied minors with family already legally in the UK that is worrying some of the volunteers. So there's a 10-year-old boy separated from his family and just nobody looking after him. Yeah, and, there's, and he's not the only one. You know, no. there are 8-year-olds, 9-year-olds, 10-year-olds that have family in the UK that are desperate to look after them and come here to visit them and bring them things to keep them warm. Do you suspect that people back home will see this and their natural humanity will say, this is awful, God, that looks really yeah. dreadful still don't want lots of them to come. Is that the obstacle? I think the problem is, you look around this and you think, how can this be Northern Europe? How can this be just a few miles away from Britain? How can this be what's happening in France? Yvette Cooper would be much happier if those miners were taken in with their families and seems to be singing from a song sheet that says whether we take more refugees, fewer or none, may well be a pressing question but that the jungle in Calais is simply no longer the answer. And Yvette Cooper joins us now. Welcome back to the Sunday politics. Andrew. Should adults from this camp be allowed into Britain? 
Well, it depends on what their circumstances are. I mean, most of them should be applying in France for asylum. And that, I think, is what you would expect to happen. But that's not some happening. of them, yeah, and some of them may not be asylum, uh, refugees. Mm. Some of them may have safe homes to go to and should do so. Others, there's clearly a lot of people there who have fled Syria, who have fled from Afghanistan, who, you know, we know are fleeing conflict right. and persecution. But I think the, there's a question about certainly the children. And we saw unaccompanied accompanied children. I mean, they are alone, abandoned and by people in, traffickers. In there were some cases where aid workers said they were cases where they had family in Britain that they were so trying to we reach. So should let these children So, for example, family. I spoke to a 15-year-old whose brother uh, is his nearest relative is in uh, Britain and he wants to join. That's why he's in Calais. He's right. trying to reach. At the moment, so we should, there's should no... We let them in? Well, we should have a process to, uh, for him to be able to apply. And I think in those circumstances, if his nearest relative is in Britain, yeah, we but, should be providing that sanctuary just as we but, did for the kinder transport many years ago ben, I understand the children issue but yeah. I'm still not quite clear what your attitude is towards the adults there because although a number of people in this camp may have started out as refugees or asylum seekers they're now in France they're in horrible sure. conditions but they're not in immediate danger of their lives so they now really want to come to the UK because they think economic prospects are better here than in France so that makes, they're all now, if they want to come to Britain, economic migrants. Well, that, look, that's not the reality, is it? There are people who are, they have no safe home at the moment, and I agree with you, they should be applying right now, and they should be assessed where they are. So the French yes. authorities should be going in, doing a full assessment so why of what people... Big question, really good question. Why are the French authorities not in there assessing all these people? Why are we leaving people in such awful conditions? I think if the French authorities can't or won't, then we should get the UNHCR to come in and to do that full assessment. That's what happened when we had the Sangat problems many years ago. There will also be people, I mean, I spoke, for example, to one, uh, a mum, a single mum with two small children who had left Syria when her husband was killed in an Assad jail. And she was trying to reach her father and brother who were also in Britain. Now, she shouldn't have to come to Calais. Actually, there should be a process for her to apply for sanctuary in Britain right. and if you had that system a fair system to apply you might prevent people coming so, to Calais in the first so place. So should, should we set up an asylum seeking vetting operation in Calais ourselves? Well we've got a system at the moment the the government set up under pressure to take uh, refugees from the camps in Syria. So my argument is no, that No, I'm should, talking about the camps I know, in Calais. I agree with you, but I'm just trying to say we should prevent yeah. people coming to Calais in the first place right. by right. having a system so them, that they can apply. Should we let perhaps some in the camp in Greece, come in as asylum seekers? Perhaps they're, in, whether, whether they're in Syria. Once people have got to, to Calais, I do think there is a case for those, particularly those children. Nobody well, we, is we looking We understand after the them. children, but and I'm also, asking about adults because it's quite, it's quite hard to know what your policy is on this. Should we start to say, look, some of them are asylum seekers, the French aren't doing their job properly, we will, and we will take them in once they've gone through the proper procedures? Yes or no? I think people should first of all be assessed. Those people who have family in Britain should be able to apply for sanctuary in Britain, but you need a managed system to deal with this. So you need to be able to do security checks. You need to be able to do refugee checks. Because at the moment, you know, Britain is only taking 4,000 refugees a year under David Cameron's plan. I think we could do more of that. And if we did that and worked with other countries, we should be clearing the problems at Calais. We should also be working to prevent people coming to Europe on those dangerous boats in the first place but if we don't I know everybody thinks this is just too difficult we just can't solve this it's well, too hard it's going to cause all sorts of problems I'm if we don't it's going to get worse well I'm trying to find what the solution is look some people may argue that the more that you who are already here that you take in and give proper status to you will encourage all the more to come into Europe well, look, people are coming, whatever happens, aren't they? The crisis has already happened. So you don't there's think been, it would? I think there's been a, there was a view so that the British government... We're told there's another five million waiting to come. Well, there's a view that the British government took, which was at one point they were arguing we shouldn't have search and rescue in the Mediterranean because somehow right. that will encourage more people to come. I think that's immoral. You can't say you let people drown in case okay. more people come. Well, people have come. They are involved. Right, well, let they me deal with the ones that are... Let, let me try Europe. and pin you down so again. So what we have to do is to be able to have a system well, that supports people. I'm trying to find people. out what you want to do, Yvette Cooper, and it's still 
still not clear. Let's take over a million migrants who've made it into the EU this year. The German government tried to, although taking most itself, tried to spread the burden through quotas of member states. Should we have volunteered a quota? I said we should, yes. How and much? as you said at the beginning, I said we should take 10,000 people. I think that would be the right thing Only to 10. do. Only 10? Why? Well, the reason the I... The Germans I, are taking a lot more. They Even are. The Swedes, much smaller sure. population, they're taking many more. Sure. Why only 10,000? And the reason I said that figure was because that was... Uh, that meant you would be talking about 10 families for every city or county across the country. And I also think the best way to do this, actually, is to work with local councils and communities, faith groups across the country as well, and say, well, look, how many refugees do you think you could support in each area. Germany's obviously in a different situation. Their labour market's in a different situation. Their housing's in a different they're situation they're as well. They're the same as ours. Well, they, uh -huh. have, yeah, they have a different so demographic. So 10,000 out of a million, that would be the British I response. Think, I think that would be a good thing for us to do. It's I think the truth is... Yeah, but the truth is, we're all, all countries are going to have to work together on this. And there isn't a simple answer either. So yeah. it's not just about what you do in terms of the number of refugees you give sanctuary to. It's also what you do to prevent people travelling. Right. And that's why I think we should be reuniting refugees, families. Okay. And you've got to do something about the humanitarian relief. Because the thing we haven't talked about, and the thing you saw on that report, is people living in terrible, terrible conditions. With France and Britain being two of the most powerful countries in the world, you would have thought it is not beyond the wit of these two countries to make sure there is proper humanitarian relief, proper sanitation, proper heating for people who are otherwise going to suffer from not just scabies, which people are suffering from now, but terrible, terrible conditions in those camps as the winter draws in. Well, indeed, we shall see uh, what horrors the winter uh, brings, because we've not gone through yet, that yet in this migrant crisis. Just before you go, you heard a colleague of yours, a Labour MP, saying that he thought the Labour Party was now moving uh, strongly in Mr Corbyn's direction on policy matters. Do you agree? Well, there's obviously been a lot of issues that I disagree with Jeremy on. We had that debate um, broadly, over the, the, the summer. Well, I think we've got... I think the, the challenge for the moment for the Labour Party is that we've got what's really become an internal uh, yeah. focus looking inwards at ourselves. We've got to look outwards. We had good campaigns on tax credits, sure. you, but we're letting David Cameron off the hook my question, because of the you? universal credit let where me, he's also let making Let me try one more cut. time. There's a series of things. We cannot let is, the toys off the hook. Let me try one more time. Is your party moving broadly in Mr Corbyn's direction or not? I'm not sure quite what that means, really, because I think we're having the debate in the party at the moment about what the policies should be for the future, and it's right that we do so. The oh. trouble is we can't make that debate just look inwards when the oh. Tories are being let off the hook on Europe, on Heathrow, on tax credits, okay. a series of things. I'll that try, is our challenge I'll now. I'll try and make the question more clear next time. Thank you for being with us. I've been